What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Ship Across the Border. My name is Max. Welcome back to Shipped Across the Motherfucking Border. Where we actually got shipped across the border. We got shipped back across the border. Shit got awkward. And we'll explain <laughs> it. It's like for like speaking better and shit. No. <laughs> so why'd you say for the podcast? Bacon's not real and neither are now. No, bacon's not real because if you go to a grocery store, there's too much bacon. I- Keep working, your time will come. It sounds like you're eating Bro. human bones. It's a mini. It sounds like you're eating bro. hamster bones. It's a, it might be stupid, but country. is India in the Middle East? I don't think so. <laughs> is it? I'm Max. I'm with Chris, and today. We're gonna explain the little situation that we got going on. So basically, I'm currently a free agent. I'm also a free agent, but like but, not with basketball. And yeah, so basically, school ended. Um, I was done the April twenty eighth. Yeah, and then the exam week and stuff like that. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, but Madai was supposed to be to merge with a school called Trocare College. Basically, mm-hmm. Trocare College is like a nursing school. They have like. STEM and like medical programs like nursing, doctors. Because we were like broke, that. we were broke as fuck. Our last president put us twelve million dollars in debt. By well, we're not putting put, put any fingers here, but Some, somebody put us twelve million dollars in debt. We don't even know any number. We don't realistically we don't know no, any numbers. A, you, 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 you can search it up. Yeah, like it's, this is Shit, public. Well, this is I mean, public information. You can search it up if you want to know some specific. A certain school put it, and a certain person put a certain school in twelve million dollars in debt. Is it twelve? Something like that. Something like that. Because it costs $2 million to build a new facility where we are now demolishing and probably putting... Elk is way more than $2 million. That's what, that's what the agricultural said? Yeah, I think so. Shit, uh, bro. Elk was like... I don't know. Elk was like 30, bro. You for real? Elk, yeah, shit. Was expensive. I don't know. All I know is that they spent way too much money on it and the last president kind of screwed us, so they were supposed to buy us out and then... But it was going to be like a mutual beneficial thing because they don't have a campus. They don't have like... They just mm-hmm. have one building, no dorms, and we have all No of money. That. And we have no money. And they have money. <laughs> so they were going to buy... They were going to buy Madai. And it would kind of be like a mutual beneficial thing mm-hmm. of like, we get A, more programs, B, more money. Yeah, get to stay and, in business. And, gets, and they get, I mean, I don't know if it was Madai, like if no one, Trucker didn't buy Madai, Madai was going to close either way. Is that like well, a thing? Clearly. <laughs> well, I mean, now clearly, but yeah. So basically, this school, Trocare, it was going to be whatever, all, all was good, everything was going good, I think. I mean, I don't really know. I wasn't, I wasn't consulted in any well, of this. Basically, they were meeting, they were supposed to meet, I don't know if they were supposed to sign the agreement that day. But then the news article is that Trocare found a bunch of scandals. That's all. That's which we will not get into. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything. Like I don't know the scandals. But they just said I've in the article. I've heard a lot of stuff. But says, I, you know, in quotations, know. scandals about Madai, and then they backed out of the deal. So our school is officially closed. Gone. We yeah. don't have a school. So Madai is closing, and that means that everybody has to um, transfer. Transfer. People have uh, all the staff have to find new jobs. Students, athletes, and all. Student athletes, everybody, and yeah. So hopefully we can buy the podcast studio equipment and set it up in my basement. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that. We'll figure that out later. Mm-hmm. But so what? Do you, I mean, kind of puts us in a situation because this happened like May 9th, tenth, something like that, which is relatively late in the recruiting process for basketball. I'm still in that. You, we've already established uh, taking your talents elsewhere, <laughs> so it doesn't really affect you. I mean, you still. Well, I still podcast still affected some... you. Still are fucked royally. <laughs> but yeah, so, so what are you planning on doing? Oh, dude, this is like a huge crossroads in my life. This is kind of like the same thing that happened when I started getting recruited for basketball. It was like, if I didn't get recruited to basketball, I only had like one other option. I had two schools I could go to, and now it's like I could go get a job in Alberta. I could go to Niagara because there's a bunch of schools. So because our school closed, so out of the blue there's a bunch of schools in buffalo and other places that are just offering to take on a bunch of these students at the same payment like the same tuition cost and, the Medi- credits and, stuff. and all that stuff so like they're just reaching out so i could go to like eight different schools or i could go work at a job over here there's just so much shit that's going on but right now i'm just gonna see what's up with you i don't even know like wherever you end up going i'm gonna try and get in there and if i don't then we'll figure it out from there so my situations i mean i feel like i'm um, We've made a bunch of videos of like how to get recruited, how to do this, how to do that, and we're coming from a place of like, well, we've done this before, and now 
kind of puts me back right in the position with y'all who are listening to this and trying to get recruited to play college basketball. Basically, so when the news broke, I made a highlight tape with a bunch of the film I got from this year from various development games and stuff like that, and then packed it with my high school highlight tape and then my transcripts, and I just wrote an email explaining everything, the situation, how I was closing and this and that, and put my email, and put my coach's email, my high school coach's email, and I sent it out to like 30 schools that I was interested in, which is kind of along the lines of everything that, I, that we were preaching before of what you should do highlight tape, whatever, and I went on all these various different college websites and copied and pasted all the coaches' emails, every single coach, because the more coaches who you put on the email, the more chance, more lives mm-hmm. are on it, so kind of just did every. I mean, you guys took my own advice, I guess, and from the stuff that we were preaching to you guys, I had to start kind of doing that again, and so I sent out a bunch of emails, and then I actually entered the transfer portal, and so, I mean, I'm coming, I mean, obviously the situation is terrible, it's terrible, but I feel fortunate in like the situation of like like need, I feel fortunate in the fact that like, for example, so I didn't play a ton this year. Obviously, for college freshman, I was hurt at the beat. Like I came back like like a week before our first game, kind of just thrown in there and just spent majority of the year learning. As did Chris and as did what four five of the six of the freshmen. Mm, basically, other than, yeah. basically, so we're all a lot of and and the sophomores too. Other than like two or three. Yeah. So all the young, I mean, there's young guys in college basketball. That's very standard. But, I mean, it just puts us in a shitty position, especially because I've put in a ton of work over the off-season. My relationship with the coaching staff has gotten, I mean, it was never bad, but it's just gotten to the point where it's been very good and starting to build trust on and off the court. And, yeah, the plan was for me to hopefully, uh, depending on the fact that I could come and play competent defense, which I was definitely working on, <laughs> um, be able to get some playing time next year. And make an on court a role. car to a pylon. Exactly. And be able to make an on-court role and just come in and shoot open shots and come in for spurts and that was the plan is to get to take a big step from this year and I kind of had a place to do that and now I have all this experience and I've gotten so much better but I don't have anything to show for it mm-hmm. so it was difficult kind of because you do have experience now yeah so exactly. a coach would rather this is one of the things you got forced and, with and too we'll talk about a coach would now. rather have a, a second year transfer who's spent a year in college basketball and went through the hard first year of understanding like being vocal, understanding plays and all that stuff because they don't have to... T- the learning curve and the ignorance debt is already paid off for him so he can immediately come on to the court and probably have a contributing role opposed to having a new freshman who might even be better than him but hasn't spent Still that year it. of getting his ass kicked. So you're actually a more valuable asset than someone who might even be better than you just because you spent the time. Yeah, but I mean, I also, like, obviously everything happened so fast I was nerve-wracking so I didn't really think about that. Like, all I was, all I was thinking is, like, okay, all I have is, like, development film and some stuff and so it was nerve-wracking. Like, okay, no co- I felt like no coaching response to me. But then I also entered the transfer portal through the Laura, who's like the mm-hmm. athletic director. She put everyone in the transfer portal. And and so I've had, I also, so I was saying, I was fortunate enough to A, like even have those development games filmed because I know a lot of people who played in those games with That's me, the, all the younger guys, fresh, uh, freshmen, sophomores who who were in those games and who weren't getting a ton of playing time on the varsity team but were playing in those games and doing well and doing their thing, don't have the film to show for it. And so they put at even more of a disadvantage. So I'm lucky that my parents were able to come down, film some of those games, so I had something to show for, show for it this year. Mm-hmm. But also, I have a lot of friends in a lot of places, and I have a lot of connections of people playing college basketball, people who know coaches. And so I kind of cast out a wide net of people that I know from friends, like uh, family friends and stuff like that, and just people I know at different places to just put in a good word for me with their coaches, with people that they know. And so with, I was just kind of, kind of doing everything that I can. And so with that, very luckily, I mean, I'm not going to disclose anything as of right now, but I have... Mm-hmm. Um, two potential op- as of right now, which is what the nineteenth, uh, twentieth. I don't know. It's Saturday, two forty-eight p.m. So I've been in the trend. It's been about a week, and I so I have two potential opportunities of college basketball homes for next year. Both of them, I would definitely look into, and I think I could come in and make an, a contributing role. And so both of those coaches, literally, like one of them was from the emails that I sent, the other one found me from the transfer portal, and both of them kind of understand. It's like the, the main thing that I bring to the table is the experience and. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, one of the most important things. And they're, both coaches said the same thing. It's, like, they would rather have a, a guy come in who already knows how to, play college, how to be a college basketball player, how to carry himself in the college basketball system and college life, as opposed to that big learning curve from a, from a freshman. And so I'm not in the exact same position as I was a year or two years ago. You've paid off your ignorance but, debt. Yeah, but I've def- I spent the whole year getting my ass beat, fucking working my <laughs> ass off. And so it's good, to, like, that, it's good to know that, like, people understand. It's not just, like was wasted and people understand and value mm-hmm. value that as well and so and I'm, I'm fortunate to have these two potential opportunities and one of them i'm heavily considering and if uh, for example i get nothing else within the next week or two like i'm 100 percent see myself attending that institution and representing them on the court and so 
commit, stay tuned, commitment coming. There's a lot of very vague statements being this institution, vague, vague this vague person did this. But um, <laughs> stay tuned, and hopefully the commitment will come within the next two, three weeks. I'm actually, today is Saturday, so tomorrow and Monday I'm going on visits to these two various schools on the northeast side because mm-hmm. they're kind of like in relatively the same direction. And so I'm going to go and visit them and see how, because that's also very, very important. Young kids, if you're being recruited by schools, make sure you take an in-person visit because you got fucked, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I'm fucked, but like, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, so make sure you take in-person visits just to see, because honestly, the vibe of the camp, like you can get so much off just being there and the vibe. And the coach, the, the, coach, the coach is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, is like when well. we talked about uh, people getting recruited to Madai before, oh, everyone we brought in the podcast said that Coach Hack was a big reason that they did also, it. Also, a big shout out to Coach Hack because oh, yeah. he, he Madai Hall of Famer, now it's kind of like like this. It's like kind of like His disintegrated. Sh- gone. And unbelievable. And he's been helping everybody on the team try and find new homes and kind of putting them above himself and Coach Long as well. And even Coach Cedric has been helping a bunch of people as well. And they're all out of jobs and they're putting the kids and us um as a priority and that's i mean that's rare like that's in this world probably like, like, a good parallel to something you just said yeah. going and getting on the campus and meeting the coach and understanding that like if shit hit the fan would this guy have your back and is this just a and genuine good person to be around you have, and you're, you're gonna get that vibe and also just the campus and the feel like do you feel yourself like that's a very, that's a big thing it's like you can go and you can get the vibe and can you wake up every day in this place and location and like just seeing all the facilities for itself and it's, it's the difference a between like a coach vouching for you and just trying to see you grow as a person versus him just using you yeah, to you. hold like to keep his job basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that was also one of the things I've been looking for is like when I'm talking to these various coaches is like, do I feel like they're personable? Do I feel like if something's wrong, I could go into their office and talk? Because there's so many times this year where I was what issue with this teacher, issue with that thing, whatever. And I just go and talk to Coach Hack, and he comes from a clean slate of just a alternate perspective from somebody who has more different life experiences than I. We just had a mature conversation about what was going on. So you really need to like evaluate. And so I'm lucky that both of the coaches that I've, or various of the coaches I've talked to are, um, are seem to be very personable. And so I'm looking forward to meeting them in person, but I think that's a big part of it. So yeah, so stay tuned for a commitment. And that's kind of what's going on right now. But that being Shit said, show. that being said, so we're also currently at my crib in Toronto. Little new setup. Let us know what you guys think, and yeah. Shipped across the border to the Jewish bedroom. Mm, not bad necessarily, but it was a bedroom at one point. But you yeah. never slept in here. Oh, I have slept in here, mm. but you wouldn't consider this a bedroom. Oh, okay, never mind. I think nah, nah. Fuck <laughs> it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Moving on. What else could really say? Like, no, I was gonna say like this is just um, sort of a a culmination of all the shit that. I've learned throughout the years of basketball kind of being applied right now is like this is just a huge crossroads and shit's just hitting the fan and like all the we were planning all this stuff I'm sure a hun- thousands of people were planning their life based on the fact that that one solid foundation of Badai being a school in general which is a pretty solid that was bet like on minus a thousand like <laughs> it's a pretty odds. good bet that I'm gonna have a school when I come back next year and now that's just gone yeah. so it's like just understanding that you you probably have a place you're listening to this you probably have a plan on the way that you want your life to go, but understand that the odds of it working out exactly the way you've planned it to are pretty much zero. Like, and so you just have to understand that when shit hits the fan, are you capable of pivoting and using the shit that you've learned to make the best decision possible? And that's kind of where I'm at right now is like, if, if I was super like pent up and didn't really, I didn't have all this life experience behind me, I might freak the fuck out and have no idea what's going on right now, but that would just make the situation worse. So now when she hits the fan, I'm just kind of sitting back watching, evaluating my options, and then I'm going to make the best decision possible because that's really all you can do in these situations. 100%. Like, obviously we're both 20, so we're both obviously not like fully like Matured. life. Ex- yeah, exactly. But like something that I feel like I've developed throughout, I mean, throughout the last two, three years of just like chaos and basketball and this and that and like, uncertainties is kind of just taking comfort in a doing everything that i pop everything that i can because right now i know i'm doing everything i can on the court i'm lifting every day i'm probably i'm lifting five to six times a week i'm on the court five to six times a week i'm taking care of my body i'm eating right so i'm getting better so whenever i'm given an opportunity i'll be ready Mm -hmm. but then on top of that i'm doing the right things if i'm writing emails i made my film and all within the first hour i'm reaching out i'm being proactive so like just like taking care of what needs to be taken care of, keeping the main thing the main thing and just working hard. But then also like being a good person and just believing 
that that's all going to work out. You just take comfort in knowing that you're doing everything you can and everything's going to work out how it should work out based on if you continue to keep working hard and you're just keeping optimistic and I guess, I don't say like building good karma, but just be like, you keep being a good person and like you act in a way, a moral way of like, where like you withstand, hold up your values and then just work hard and believe that everything's going to work out and, and you should be, I mean, there's definitely going to be uncertainty, but you should not worry about the future. You should take care of what's now and you can only control what you can't exactly. control. Like I'm assuming the way that you had your life planned out from when you were like 14 and you're playing basketball is not the way that things panned out. At you want to know? You know, okay. I thought that when I was in ninth or 10th grade playing for my high school basketball team here, like in Canada at the public school, I thought, you know what? Like, I want to play college basketball and I, my, the bet that like, I want to play is for Guelph university. Mm-hmm. That's why I thought like, fu- I'm going to fucking Guelph. I'm about to be a Griffin. Okay. Um, Definitely did not see myself playing Division Three basketball. Because like, it was the guy below just, you? No, 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 no. Just, I didn't really know about it. Mm-hmm. I just thought I was like, American like, basketball. Max wanted, Mac wanted to play at Duke. And then Mac? Oh, yeah. He, 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 he was like, I want to play, play at Duke. Duke. And then it was like, oh, shit, I can't play at Duke, but I'm going to play here. So yeah. that kind of the same thing? No, I just thought I wanted to play in Canada. Mm-hmm. I just, I didn't really know much about other than, like, the high major Division One schools. Like, I, mean, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily know about the Division Two, Division Three, and NII, Juco scene. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, as I got put, got more serious into basketball, I kind of immersed myself in the culture and met people who have played at different places and learned about different opportunities. And I realized, okay, well, Division Three basketball is a very, very good opportunity and it probably fits my play style, probably fits my the life. Like, I like to go to a small school. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of just ended up there. And, yeah, I don't know. That definitely wasn't exactly what you But it definitely planned. was not well, it definitely was not what I planned. And that's the thing with the, the lessons. Like, I wanted to go to Orangeville Prep. That was my thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I was like, you know what? If I can make Orangeville Prep, I can probably make some shit work. Didn't go to Orangeville Prep. And still made some shit work. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you just take the lessons of, like, when shit hits the fan. Like, nothing's going to go the way you plan it. At least not in the, my life. Like, shit's not going to go the way you plan it to. But if you just take whatever opportunity is given to you and use it to the best of your ability, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. Even with, like, the podcast, like... I know. This we, is, if I would have guessed three years out what I was doing, this would not be what I No, but I I'm saying, doing. like, so we started off recording on your phone in my dorm room. On a Triscuit's box. Yeah. Or no, on the fucking... Yeah, the tri- and supported by the fucking... Pork rinds. Pork rinds. <laughs> and then... And then we got... Shout out pork rinds. And shout out <laughs> Val, the communication professor, oh, for yeah, giving for access sure. to the studio, and we kind of just leveled up and leveled up and leveled up. But then... We whatever like me and Chris live two hours apart. We live in the same obviously we live in the same province in Ontario in Ontario, but it's two hours apart, and so we kind of just like had to f- get over that obstacle. And so Chris mm-hmm. made the commitment to drive two hours down here so we can use some Wi Fi, get out of that farm, <laughs> get some cellular activity. I have cell, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we kind of just pivoted, and now we're recording here. And then the future for the podcast is kind of unknown. Well, very blurry. Hypothetically, if I go to this school in X place and they match my two because a lot of the schools said which is something that's awesome i'm very grateful for is they're a going to transfer credits over and b going to match the tuition which is huge but, ha- but that's also because i'm playing basketball so some of these schools are not partnering with Madai, but they're doing it for me because i'm playing basketball so if hypothetically these schools could do that for chris mm-hmm. as well then we could be in the same place and we could do something similar to this maybe say story baby if you guys know um blue mountain state the show I will be Alex Moran, and this is my Sammy Cacciatore. I don't know if I like that comparison, but I'll take it. But it's a it. pretty good one. <laughs> I'll take it. But Sammy's uh, a pretty cool fella. He's also you should be more like Sammy, honestly. You need to be a little more. There's so many. Like, I'm not going to bring it up in the podcast, but there's so many episodes where he just gets into like deep shit because he's an idiot. and like. But he... One thing is he's out here. Like He, yeah, he's he doesn't, outside does of it. not like, care. He, he yeah. will put himself out there. So he definitely, definitely learn from that. But yeah, so what are your, what are your plans for the rest of the summer? Um, also blurry, dude. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I'm just scanning like 12 job options, waiting to see what happens with you. There's like they said, the eight colleges in Buffalo that are uh matching Madai's tuition and just reaching out to them. So, I'm just gonna watch what happens with that. Like, time is obviously of the essence. Are you thinking of lacing them up again? I thought about it. You sent me a message, and I'm like, realistically, because I keep in mind, I'm frying kids in my little hometown area, but a few of them played college basketball, a few of them played college basketball, but like. But, like, there's just so many different ways that this could go, and I'm just overseeing everything right now. I texted Brad about this, and I was like, I'm just seeing all these options. Come on the show, Brad. We could definitely make that happen. We yeah. could have made that happen today. I'm not going to lie to you. last minute. Yeah. But um, I texted him, and I was like, yeah, I'm just kind of being open to anything. And then he was like, you're not being open. You're just being forced to see other options because something else closed. And I was like, I get like, You can't win that argument with Brad. He's just be saying shit like, like that. For real, he just, you cannot, he has to be right, and you have he's, to be wrong. He's saying shit like that. 
But um, yeah, that's kind of just where I'm at is just taking the lessons from basketball and applying them. Another thing before we get into like the rest of the summer shit is like, how much better do you notice like how just not even like better because obviously you're better this year than you like playing in open gyms now than you were last year, but it's just like. Like understanding the game and level of play Dude, versus you don't these understand kids how much better at the game you get just by being, being around people who yes. understand the game. Like I'll, I came back, and I don't even train anymore. But it's just me. You probably haven't shot a ball because and more more than once or twice a week. Dude, yeah. and there's people like that guy. I should do, oh fuck! I'll do a shout out. Caleb Zhang. I don't know. He's prob- Mr. Zhang. He's probably not gonna watch this, but um, he we were. I was running up and down. And I was hitting layups, and just being smart with the ball and getting easy buckets and all this shit. And I was kind of frying kids, making tough layups. And he pulled me aside and he's like, "Dude, I'm not gonna lie. Like, since you went to school, you have gotten ten times better. And it's just like physically, I've gained twenty pounds of muscle, but like that's not that big of a difference because now I'm just slower on defense." But it's just understanding where you need to be and when. It's like I can see when someone's cutting back door and then, okay, well, after he cuts, I can drive. The lane's going to be open. Just understanding the nuances of the game and just seeing it play out in front of people who know the game that much better than you will make you that much better at the game. We talked about this in the other episode of, like, needing to get out of your hometown. It's not just for the connections. It's not just to be on high level of basketball. It's, like, to uh, to be around people who understand the game and are, are, are ahead of you in the path you're trying to take. 100%. So you can just mimic what they're doing 100%. and then add that to your game. Like, I, I'd be coming back and I'm playing these... We, we try and get runs usually on Fridays with, like, high-level guys. So it's me, some co- other co- a bunch of other college guys, and then, like, guys who are playing at high prep schools here, like United Scholastic, like, all these higher mm-hmm. prep schools and, like, playing at North Pole Hoops League, like, high school guys. And, PH and we play and, like... One time we played, and there was this guy who just played for Seneca, but he played at a D2 in um, Milwaukee. Shout out, his name is Jake. Shout out, Jake. He actually went to my prep school years before I was there. And we're playing, and I'm pl- like my thing is I shoot the ball, but my release has gotten so much smoother, so much higher, so much quicker, that it's, I, I, I can just get an offensive rebound, sprint out to the behind the three-point line, shoot a fadeaway three, and I consistently <laughs> hit that. And it's very annoying if you're playing against me, if I hit five Tell straight. <laughs> but like that's just how I'm playing. And I can I'm spotting up, and I'm... If my t- my six nine friend Ryan plays for UFT, gets a offensive rebound, I'm sprinting to the three point line. I'm hitting a three end of possession, mm-hmm. and I can do that five times in a row, six times in a row. That's game up to eleven, and I'm just frying. I'm consistently hitting. I'm consistently hitting open shots, whether they're catch and shoots or catch and shoots on the move, and I'm just like I'm not doing crazy step back, tween hezies. I'm just either get like a like a one move get to the basket. Or a mid a pull up or like let's just like these simple baskets, but efficiently and effectively where I'm not really missing. Like I'm taking high percent like high percent shots for me, but I'm making good looks and I'm getting good looks. And he like he's older, he's like twenty four, he just finished his last season. He's like pulled me over, he's like, Yo, I'm so proud of you how much A, how much like smoother your shots like has gotten and it's just unreal now. But B, like you're playing the game the right way. Mm-hmm. Like he's like because these like a lot of these kids, like younger kids, like these guys from like the North Pole Hoop Showcase, whatever, they're just like doing like a ton of dribble moves, one per one. That's kind of what that was based on. Though, is like you're supposed to yeah, still get yours. Exactly, try and get recruited. And he's like, these like like you're playing the game the right way, and you're killing everybody. And it's just like, and like everybody, like everybody noticed like how like. Dude, that's one of the most frustrating you know I mean? things is when a guy knows what his strengths are because that's one of the things that you'll yeah, find. Yeah, to play against somebody who knows what he's good at and sticks to it. Yeah, like if you go up in a level of basketball, you'll realize that like stuff like I can come back down here into where I'm from and do all this dumb shit. Like, I could do. Eight dribble moves, blow by the guy and hit a layup. But when you go to college or you go to the next level that you're going to level up for, you can't do that shit unless that's part of your game. And the odds are it's probably not. So you have to stick It may to be part of your game now, but you're not good at it, at it enough to be able to do it at the same level exactly. at the next level. Exactly. So like you have to stick to the things that actually work. And then you just sharpen those things to a fine tip. Exactly. And you just when you see somebody who like, like I'm going to Dante Wilcott. When you see him rip drive and do nine mid-range pull-ups. In a row. On someone's mouth. Didn't touch the rim once. That is the nastiest shit I'll ever see in my life. Like I would rather see that happen than someone come down exactly. and break, break the defender down nine times. Exactly. And I really kind of coach kind of really clearly defined what I would be in college basketball. And it's not like he was putting me in a box or anything. He was like, this is you, and you shoot the ball, and so this is what you should be working on or to be the most effective. And I kind of took that, like, and ran with it and just ma- mastered. I just doing a ton of spin shooting off the dribble, just catch and shoots, pump fake slot, like all these, like, game-like shots that I would be getting. And I've really gotten really good and really consistent at them. That's so frustrating to be a guy who's trying to get to the position where I'm in, and I'm, I'm coming in and I'm hitting six threes in a row off simple things but you just can't stop it because i worked so hard and i'm so good at it so i definitely that's the biggest thing i've noticed also i didn't play pickup for like a year because 
Got gotcha. hurt in the summer. No pickup in the summer. No pickup in the preseason. Then we had season, and I played started playing pickup post-season. in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. And my get, I got. I mean, also that's also helped me playing pickup with those guys. And the like, in, even in those, like, I'm not taking tough shots. I'm just. just it's way more structured than like normal pickup. Exactly, and so I'm playing, and I'm getting looks, and I'm hitting, I'm knocking down shots in that pickup, and I come in here, it's less structured. Now, I mean, like, hypothetically, like, sometimes I'll pull from the volleyball line. Or, like, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take, like, some step back threes here and there. But, like, but I was also just, like, working on, like, some stuff, I, like, I've been working on a few. Like, that's one of the things I want to improve on is, like, off the dribble shooting. Because mm-hmm. I'm a very, like, my form is extremely conducive to catch and shoots. <laughs> yeah, I literally catch and I shoot it. <laughs> so, off the dribble, I've never really been, but I feel like that's an area of the game where I can expand on. And so, that's something I'm working on in playing pickup is, like, also, like at the next level, like I'm still a two, like I'm still an off ball guard, but I could, like, double my opportunity to go on the court if I could be a primary ball handler. And so if mm-hmm. I am getting screens, I have to learn how to shoot behind screens, how to do this, all this, other types of stuff. And so definitely been like working on my game and pickup as well, and it's been fun, bro. I, bro, I well, I didn't like pickup is exhausting, and like at the beginning of the at the off season we were just playing like four or five times a week, like I was exhausted. But like now that I'm only playing like twice a week maybe pick up like like i crave to play pickup like i mm-hmm. love it you know what i mean like, and i never really i never really played pickup like that before i always like worked on a ton of my game and just played games whether it's from my school pick up maybe here and there but like now i'm consistently playing it bro i love it yeah my God, i used to crank pick up like five times a week like, yeah that was like thing. i don't know i feel like there's a fine line of like like i like playing pickup but, you but i feel like if i it. play too much pickup it kind of just gets like Repetitive. redundant like it's like mm-hmm. it gets repetitive and like I'd rather just go and work on my game and get shots up and build a, and try and build a skill and practice and then come and work on that skill and pick I mean, up you'd be better off you know sharpening I mean? the knife before you go and use it again because then you're exactly the exactly up. exactly exactly I don't know also I feel like also like my role is very especially in like pickup is like at school is very it's the same role so I'm catching and shooting every single game so there's not a lot of variety so also like that gets redundant mm-hmm. but i feel like here it's also different because i have a, i mean obviously i'm one of the best players on the court because in like the this place is not as many high level guys in the area we try and get everybody we can but it's not like it's not it's not like a full college basketball mm-hmm. open gym so my role obviously increases a lot so i can definitely do more so it's also a lot more fun and just kind of just take my game to the next level yeah, getting back to the other thing too. Before, what are we at right now? Twenty six minutes, thirty six minutes, twenty six minutes. Before we, um, I don't know what else we're gonna talk about after this. I want to talk a little bit more of the summer plans. Like, so you're okay. you into training, but getting. I'm getting to this whole thing, and then we can move on. Um, basically, just talking about what he was talking about is like refining your skills and shit. Is like to go from shitty to not shitty is just mastering the fundamentals. Bro, it's easy to go. From shitty, shitty to from not shitty. shitty. But then, what I was gonna say too is I was watching a podcast of the guy talking. Basketball about... Basketball is the easiest sport to be mediocre at. I'll die on that hill. Basketball is the... You'll never see another sport where guys who never played real in their entire yeah, life... Yeah, it's a weird league. ...can go like and that. hold their own... Like, like, it's just... You can put the... It's just... It's so easy to be not that terrible. Mm-hmm. But it's one of the hardest sports to go from... from not terrible... Not terrible to, to good. Really good. Yeah, or from... Exactly. But like, the thing that... You the, can probably even get to good without actually taking it seriously. But it's the hardest people, sport to get from good to really good. That's the thing I was talking about. Like, the thing that will get you from... 0 to 50 is the same thing that will get you from 50 to 100. You just have to do more of it. Because I was watching a podcast on um, how to go from 0 to $100,000 is the same as going from 100000 to a million. You just have to do more of the same thing. And it's like the guy was talking about you have to sell one thing to a bunch of people and you just have to do that and uh, monetize it and structure I'm looking it. kind of swole, bro. No, you're not. And, okay, um, but basically, like, <laughs> the fundamentals, if you just master those and then you grind that axe, you'll get from shitty... To not shitty, and then to go from not shitty to pretty good, you just grind one fundamental skill like shooting to a fine tip, and then to go from good to really good, you have to grind the rest of them. But and you may and you expand on. So let's say now, exactly. For example, right it's now it's the like, same um, thing from not shitty to good, just yeah. grinding it more and more and more and more and more. And then it expands. It kind of like exp- once you get the tip, then you can expand to other areas. So for exactly. example, like I shoot the ball. I I say like I don't want to say I'm, ne- I'm never I'll never say that I've mastered something, mm-hmm. but I've gotten to a catch and shoot where I can do it in an elite level. And so now it's like, okay, well, now I get the ball and someone's sprinting out at me. So now I can't shoot off the cap. So what am I going to do? Hmm. And then it's pump fake, slide step to the three, pump fake, one dribble pull up. There's, di- there's just a variety of options. But you, you have to, you but you have to get something. Exactly. Now you can grind another fundamental. Exactly. But, you but, have to get, thing, but you have to get good enough at one thing to where the defense is f- so frightened that you're going to do that one thing to now you have an option to do something else. Because if nobody, if you can't shoot the ball, I'm not running. I already play 
low enough defense that it is. So if I know you can't <laughs> shoot the basketball, I am not going to run and contest your shot. Classic. Because I'd rather you shoot. Exactly. I'm going to do that. And you're going to miss. <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. And you're going to miss. Because if you're not confident in your shot and I come and I pretend like yeah. I'm going to jump and you, you're you going to hesitate in your shot and you're going to shoot it awkwardly, you're going to hit the back rim and I'm going to get the offensive rebound and shoot a fadeaway three in the right corner. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. And so you have to make me, res- you have to make the defense respected. And once you're respected enough to where they're feared that you're going to do that, then you can expand into other areas of of another fundamental. Yeah. So was what it, you was pull it up like or? early early on? Was it like told to you like by a coach or somebody, or you decided that you were just going to be a shooter? Like how early did that happen? Okay, so I started off my basketball career when I played when I was really little. I was like I was playing on one of the best teams in Canada mm-hmm. with like some guys, all like five or six guys who were playing in college. Now we were. We came second in Division One OBA when there was no CYOBO, when there was no anything else. They were really fucking good. But I was just the guy. I would come in, and I would just hit short corner jumpers. Like some but you were a shooter from there. day one. But, I was, but I, I was a shooter in there. But then I kind of hit a... I was 5'10 in, like, 7th grade or 8th grade. So I kind of became, like, a, a 4, like, a power forward. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of stopped, like... I was more, like... I found my advantage was getting to the basket. So I had more, like, spin moves. More, like... Not, I, I kind of low-key played, like, that guy on Pitt Bradford. Does that make sense? Like the no, the guy, like, the really good dude. Oh, like, the slasher. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of play like that. Like, I can still shoot it a bit, but, like, it, I wasn't, like, that consistent. Like, like, I didn't stop take, getting shots up, but I kind of stopped being my MO because mm-hmm. I was huge. I was, like, like me and Ryan Rennick, who's 6'9", now, were the yeah. same height. And five, I was five, I was a big kid. I was big enough to definitely hold my own with other, like, You pissed off when you beat Young? Shit, I, didn't, I would win infinitely better now. <laughs> before, but if, if I could have kept growing on the same trajectory as he was, I would be an NBA. <laughs> <laughs> if, I was six, if I was six nine, I don't know, dude. Then shouldn't he be in the league? Yeah, he he'll end up there one day, hopefully. Okay, um, but yeah, so we did. You, but yeah. you so went no. back to shoot. But then, so then, when I started playing on my Canadian like public school team, mm-hmm. again, I was still like, I, I went from being a four to being like a three. Yeah. Now, so now I was kind of like. I was kind of like Trevor. Like, I could knock down a shot, but I was still trying to get to the basket. So, maybe I just say I scored 12. Say I scored 13 points. I hit one three and, five, like, five twos mm-hmm. kind of thing. But I was more, like, mid-range, more, like, fadeaway. So, when did you get, like, But back? then, so then, when I went from JV to varsity, and I then I started to become, and I'm like, okay, I really want to, like, hone on, on this shot. So, I was going into my grade 10 or 11 year. And then, like, okay, I'm going to be, and then that was the year where I was, like, really was outside of my driveway, just form shooting. Mm-hmm. Just getting my, just getting, just get, just learn how to knock down shots. Is that like an awareness thing or did a coach like? No, it was like an awareness thing. You just knew you had to start shooting the ball. Because I was going to say that goes into what we were talking about before is like if you get, the people who are in the city and have good basketball on them have so much more access to a coach who can define your role early. So you can start grinding that fundamental early. It wasn't really a coach, but I just recognized that, okay, if I go and see like this varsity basketball, I'm going to be, I'm going to go from being a three to being a a one Mm -hmm. or a two. And I need to be able to, like, I I also just wanted to, I wanted to expand my game. And I just kind of like fell in love with it and just on the driveway, my dad, I would get up in the morning at 6 a.m. before my dad, this is even like COVID, like before my dad would hop on his online calls at 7, I would get up at 6 and we'd go and shoot for an hour on my driveway and he just rebound for me and whatever. He's like, not great, but just let me know if you got your shot the ball the same way. Because I've always been on shooting the ball consistently the same way. And so he would always tell me, he would always tell me like, I would ask him like after every shot, like did it look how it was before? And so... And that, I mean, that's crazy, but, like, if I'm just I'm shooting by myself, you, you, and let's say you're changing your form, you can't really tell if you're being consistent with it. So it mm-hmm. really helps to have somebody else there. I kind of fell in love with it. And then mm-hmm. the last two years, and, like, I was a shooter at and here, and then I went to the States, and I was kind of like, like, that's all I, like, then, then like, that was really where my role was defined. Because I was here, let's just say I averaged, whatever, like, I averaged 10, and I hit, like, one or two threes. A game. Like, I was, like, I, definitely I was shooting more threes than I was twos. Like, I was definitely labeled a shooter. But I was doing more. I was bringing the ball up, and I was like, I was still getting to the basket. But then when I went to the states, my coach, we, we they already had a point guard, and he ended up going to play college basketball as well. And so he was a point guard. I was like, hey, I, I don't like you can be the back. You'll be the backup, not the backup. Like I was still starting. I was starting too. But he's like, you can be the backup ball handler. But like, I mainly want you to come off screens. And so he kind of mm-hmm. like, that's so when I that's when I started. It. Yeah, he kind of like defined it. Shout out Coach Kerbis, and then. That's when I started working on shooting on the move. Because before I wasn't really shooting, I was just shooting catch and shoots. And that's like, again, I got really good catch and shoots, but like the next level of that is shooting on the move. So I started shooting on the move, shooting on behind, like, like on. You really just can't go wrong with training shooting at a young age. Like, yeah. You, you got to progress. Go you got to start off with your, start off mastering form, free throws, and then progress. But in general, you just had one skill that allowed you to get on the court. And then because you were on the court, 
your coach could trust you enough so that he could put you into a game so you could yeah. get reps and then you could just start refining that skill. Yeah, yeah. Work. And then, I mean, COVID and whatever, and then my, I mean, we, we, I think we went into this before. Like my, I kind of, I tried to change my jump shot because I had a very low release point. I kind of like shot it from like here. And I knew that wasn't going to be transferable to college. I had a few coaches tell me that. And so it kind of took me like a, a year, maybe a year and a half to kind of like go from hitting shots with a form that was like, I've, I've always had a little bit of an awkward form. But I was hitting a ton of shots, and then I kind of started to change in. I went through a really long, awkward stage, and then kind of like halfway through the end of this year was when I really became comfortable with it and kind of just just clicked for me. Mm. And now I'm going to shoot the ball at an elite college level next year, hopefully. So, yeah. But I said going to, going to varsity basketball is when I, myself, like I want to be able to shoot the ball, but then my prep school coach defined it. And then hack even more defined oh, it. Yeah, he was like, like, all you do is shoot. Is shoot bro. You're only here to shoot. So if you don't shoot, get off the court. Like he, he would yell at me if I didn't shoot. And Especially get the fuck off my court if you're not yeah. shooting the ball. <laughs> then he really defined the role. I was like, all right, so you're going to shoot. And that's what happens. You move up a level. Use the thing that you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's all I got right now. Well, like, so you're the summer. You're training. Two little those. kids. Two young children. One of them's moving to fucking Meaford. Whatever the fuck is in Meaford. Sounds like a cartoon. It's, it's it's by one sound, but um, one of them. So I mean, I'm learning a shit ton about the game just by watching these two play. But like, one of them is kind of a, he's a half big, so he's like six. He's like six two, six one. But he's a, how old? Uh, grade ten. That's a guard. But that's what I'm saying. Like he, but he plays like a big. He's a bigger bullshit. Is tell me about it. But he he'll catch the ball and like right now I'm just trying to get him to the point where. I would feel comfortable playing him at a big spot so we can get on the court because I'm not going to If I show this kid's jumper, it's broken. Like, it is broken. And he's not handling the ball. So, like, the only way he's going to get on the court is by being a big. So, might as well fucking figure that out so we can get well, on the court. you can just get some form shooting. That's what we're working on, too. But, dude, like, it's actually broken. Like, if I should... I'll you show gotta him. break that shit down, bro. It took me... I told you, I was shooting the ball well with the ant form and now my form is still not 100% perfect, but it took me a year and a half to go from... shoot up. It took me a year and a half to go from an elite high school shooter to an elite high school shooting conducive form mm-hmm. to an elite college conducive form. That's the thing too. You and, to, bro, but the thing is, not everybody's willing to put in that time and put in, get in their ass beat and fucking miss shots. You're, exactly, that's the thing. You're going to start missing shots and that's what, you have to be willing to suck for a certain amount of time. Dude, it's so difficult, bro. That's what <laughs> me and Coach Long talked about. When I, so I came in and I was hitting shots, but it, my form was still like in the process of, I was still changing. Yeah, it was, it was not 100% like I should put a clip right fluid. there the first time you shot a basketball after. After getting hurt? Yeah, yeah that was yeah, bad. Yeah. That was also how I shot a basketball in six months, like with jumping and mm-hmm. shit. But he's like, realistically, this year, like, dip, what are you coming back from being hurt? Like, chances are you're not going to get a ton of opportunity this year. So why not just fucking suck ass this year? Fuck it. And prepare yourself to be really good next year. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like, I was wrestling with that a bunch, but then once I really committed to the process, I've said this on the show before, like once I really started committing to the process, when I saw the most results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to work with them, dude. I'm just going to, right now, that ask, we're just working on left-hand layups, to be really honest with you. And, like, a lot of kids aren't willing to do that. Like, you'll get out there and you'll work on your nine-move dribbling package, but in a year and a half, when this kid can consistently make a left-hand layup over you, I bet you it gets more playing time than you. Because sure. your left-hand layup still sucks. For sure. Your left-hand layup sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, and the, other kid, the other kid is, I'm not glad the other kid's actually pretty tough. Like, he, he can, I'll be working on contact finishing, bro, and, like, I used to do this with, Brad used to do this with us. We'd go down, and he would just, like, just hammer you. And if you don't finish, it's like, if you can finish through that, you can finish through anything. Yeah. And I'll whack the shit out of him, and he'll still find a way to get it up into the rim, and I'm like, okay, this kid could, like, do something. His handle's not bad, his jump shot's there, like, this kid could be decent. How old is he? Straight nine. He's young. Like, he's tough. And, like, he'll, he'll hit you with, like, a move, and then I started working on it, because before, I don't, younger kids, especially with ball handling, they hate playing physical defenders because as soon as someone presses up on you and they start like kind of whacking you, you don't get that call, the ball seems to fly everywhere and your shit just goes to, your fundamental literally goes to shit. So with him, I'm just working on like, once you get bumped one time, it's like, that's not enough to get me off my line. I'm still going to yeah. attack your outside hip, hit you, get to the rim, and I'm, sure. you're going to be at my mercy. What else are you doing this summer? Like, you working um, on? I'm trying to probably get a job somewhere. There's like three, three main ones right now. So one would be, a pipe fitter, which I don't know what that means. Cut pipe, move pipe, lay pipe. A pipe fitter? Pipe fitter, pipe layer. I lay pipe, pipe for the summer. Um, or Shit. there's a potential, this is, I don't know what the odds are of this right now, but I could move out west to Alberta and make 60 bucks an hour putting wires and holes as an electrician with my boy. Or I could uh, move eggs in a farm. For like twenty bucks an hour, so that's like the three options right now. And then still lifting and shit. Oh, dude, we're getting diesel. I'm up to two hundred one. Yeah, that's basically what, what we're. What am I doing? I'm lifting. I'm getting shots up, playing pickup. 
Oh, so yeah, frying kids, too. I'm still frying kids. I'm, mistake. I'm playing in the University of Toronto Summer League. So, it's a very, very good, like, just like, it's not, it's not like, crazy season, but there's, like, Nipissing is in it, mm-hmm. men's basketball. There's a prep school, like, where Angel, the high school that Andrew Wiggins went to, that prep school, uh, it's called Hoden now, Hoden Lea. It was one secondary before. Yeah, there's they're in it. that's tough as fuck. They're in it. Um, I don't know, Tarot Tech is in it, McGill is in it, and then there's a bunch of, like, other teams, and then I'm on a, kind of, a, called a free agent team, because I'm not, obviously, I don't play in the Canadian University circuit or anything like that. But he, like the assistant, I know the coaches of the University of Toronto staff because they were the same coaches of my like national Maccabi team in Israel this past summer. So they've kind of just got, I think it's like sixteen or like twenty, like elite like college hoopers who didn't have a team and kind of made two like free agent teams. So like it's like a ten team league, very high competition. So eventually like, I'm gonna play against the University of Toronto team, who's a very very good team in all these very teams, good. and I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to competing against these good guys, and then just. Working on my game, working, doing some personal training stuff as well for some, some family friends, and like my sister started playing basketball. So we have basketball this year, and so I'm training her and some of her teammates and some other people, and then working at, as a basketball coach at these like day camps as well, at Elite. So shout out Elite Camps, and yeah, basically just chilling with my friends, recording the pod, I'm just in. finding a place to fucking play basketball next year. <laughs> Finding like a place for sure. Chris to ride his coattails. Exactly. Sam catch a Tory up the bit. <laughs> yeah. You got anything else? Nah, bro. I think I'm chilling. I think that's it for today. So thank you guys for listening. Shipped across the border in the Jewish bedroom. What up, what up, what up? Subscribe to the YouTube. I S- shipped across the border. SATB underscore pod on Instagram. Instagram and shipped across the border on Twitter. And TikTok. subscribe. TikTok. TikTok. Subscribe. Let's say Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, we should make it Twitter. I've been using that for recruiting a lot, actually. But yeah, so subscribe, leave a like, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Peace.